Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Micah Stevens and you're tuning in to a two-part video series on inflations. Today we're going to talk about forward inflations, the mental space we want to cultivate as well as the physical posture that we want to maintain throughout. If you guys enjoy this content, please subscribe, like the video, comment down below any questions you have. As a disclaimer, I am not here to replace in-person instruction. Please go get training from a USPPA rated instructor who has your best interest in mind. You're really going to progress a lot more safely and effectively in this sport if you do. Really quick before we jump into today's content, I'd like to give a little shout out to the five subscribers to my Patreon account that are A, supporting this content and B, getting exclusive information and details on how to improve in the sport. And through this link, you have the opportunity to get connected with me one-on-one -on -one via video chat. I do one session per month where together we can look at footage of you and figure out exactly what it is that needs improving and how to progress in the sport safely and effectively. Well, that's enough of that, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into today's content. In part one of this video series, we're gonna be talking about forward inflations. And like I mentioned in the last couple of videos that I did in a two-part series on clipping in, we talked about assessing the wind direction. A really cheap and easy way to assess the wind speed is with your ears. If you can easily hear the wind with your ears, then you know that it's time to do a reverse launch. In other words, that wind is strong enough to where if you were to inflate that glider facing forwards, it's got more of a chance of pulling you backwards onto your back and making this an uncomfortable launch altogether. So if you can hear the wind, that's a good chance that the wind is strong enough to where you want to, what I call face the beast, be able to support yourself by leaning back as you inflate that glider. And again, you'll start hearing that wind around six miles per hour. So now that we've clipped in successfully, we have our A's in our hands, let's talk about the next few steps. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is find our center with those A's in our hands. The way we do this is by stepping forward gently and keeping our eyes forward on the point on the horizon that's going to be congruent with your center point that you feel. When you find your center, it's imperative to keep your arms as flexible and as loose as possible. This way your skeletal system finds the center rather than your muscular system. Our muscles are never going to be perfectly symmetrical. So if we have a tendency to bring our hands forward as we move forward to find our center and feel the tension on those lines, it's not going to be perfect. That's why we want to get our hands back as we step forward. We keep our eyes forward to have a reference point. And that reference point is really important because when we take our two steps back, which we do to allow us to build momentum up to jolt this wing into the air. As I pull tension into that glider, I know I'm gonna be symmetrical because I found that point earlier as I found my center. So I'm just going to gently bob my hands forward and backwards to feel for the weight of the lines. In other words, I'm not moving forward enough to pull that wing forward and close my leading edge because that's not going to help me inflate. I'm going to take two steps back so I have momentum. I'm going to keep my eyes on that point, keep my chest open, my chin up, my eyes long, and then my arms nice and back and right at about a 90 degree angle. I don't want them down here because this is going to hold the wing down. I don't want them up here because that's going to close the leading edge too abruptly when I pull tension. So I'm going to keep my hands somewhere in neutral and let my arms come back behind my body. So now that we have found our center point physically, gotten our arms in the right position, now we want to center our mind as well. And to start, we're going to take two deep breaths. As we do this, it helps lower our heart rate, get our stress levels down, and it also oxygenates our muscles, getting ready for a nice, solid, confident inflation. One more deep breath. Some things to keep in mind as we go to inflate the glider is that we want to spend as little time with that glider behind us. So during our deep breaths or immediately following, let's visualize the inflation, what it should look like and what it should feel like. This is what professional athletes do and they really see themselves in the moment doing the activity. And then when it comes time to actually perform, they're more prepared to do that and things tend to line up. I know it sounds tacky and a lot of people skimp this side of things as newer pilots, but when I've seen a student genuinely visualize and then execute, 
I see some really good success. So consider this before going into your inflation. So we've found our center physically, we found it mentally, we've oxygenated our body, we've visualized. Now we are ready to find that center point, keeping those arms wide, keeping that chin up and chest open, strong legs and a stoic or relaxed upper half. We're going to move quickly towards that point. We wanna keep our posture leaning forward initially to really get into that glider and get that glider up and off the ground. And we wanna keep strong, fast legs, especially if we have less wind. There is a direct inverse correlation to our wind speed and the rate at which the glider is gonna come up and over our heads. In other words, if the wind speed is really low, it's gonna require a lot of speed from our legs to get that glider to actually come up and over our heads. If there is four miles an hour of wind, that glider is gonna come up a lot easier. So just keep that in mind as you go in for that inflation, how much energy is going to be required from my legs to get this glider off the ground. One of my favorite quotes is that expectation can speed your progress. When you know what to expect, things can happen a little bit more efficiently and effectively. So when the winds are light, expect to run a little bit harder and a little bit faster to get that glider to settle over your head. Now, during the inflation phase, our arms that were down at 90 degrees are going to lead the leading edge. So if this is my glider and my thumb is the A's, as the glider comes up, I'm leading the leading edge with the A's. If there's no wind, it might be all the way up to 12 o'clock, but if there's some wind, I'm generally releasing the A's right around 10 o'clock so that I don't ask the glider to come too far forward and actually do a frontal tuck. So right around 10 o'clock, I'm going to release the A's and then I'm gonna be into the control phase, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. Now it is imperative to keep in mind that speed is life and speed is control. Those cell openings on the leading edge are gulping in air and the trailing edge of my glider is stitched shut. So in other words, as air enters, it really doesn't have anywhere to go and it pressurizes my wing. It makes it full and it gives it life. If you are at all familiar with water sports, the faster you're going on your motorboat or in that canoe, the more control you have with your rudder. The more speed you can bring into the inflation part of the equation, the quicker and more effectively you're gonna have that glider over your head ready to control. A fun little tip I have for you guys is during your inflation, feel free to just glance back and check a wingtip. Since we're doing a forward launch, we're facing away from the glider and we don't necessarily feel or know what that glider is doing behind us. Using a visual cue and just using your peripheral so that you continue to see that point out in front of you, it'll tell you whether or not you need to step away from that wingtip if it's rising too quickly or maybe towards it if it's sticking to the ground. But all the while you're maintaining that visual reference point in front of you so that you have that point to run forward. It's anchoring you and it's pulling you towards that point. That is the biggest part of the equation is keeping your feet moving all the way to that point. You're trying to give that point a big bear hug with these open arms. Okay guys, this was part one of a two part video series. This part on forward inflations, the next part will be on reverse. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. It means a lot to me as I put a lot of love and effort into these videos. If you like the content, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel, share it with a pilot who might be in need. But without further ado, this is Lifted PPG. My name is Micah Stevens. Don't forget to take that deep breath and we'll see you guys in the next one.